Hi everyone, so welcome back to the Level Coding. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I build this real-time voting application with Next.js and Superbase. So there are three things that I'm gonna talk about in this video. Is the first one is how I design the table and policy. The second one, how I populate the data. And the third one is how I render the data. All right, so let's get started. All right, so before we doing that, let me show a quick demo of the application. So if you go into the link in the description, you'll be able to see this one. So this is the home page. So this one is be able to access by every user. So even none of the kid user can be able to see this one as well. So you can see right here, this user is not locking. He'd be able to see all of this content as well. But if he navigate into each one of the vote room, he do not see any content except the public one right here. And so they need to be locked in. And for authenticated user, he be able to lock in and he be able to see all of the vote pool right here and he can do the comment. And also we have the keep track of the number of present of the user that currently inside this room as well. And for this one, we keep track of authenticated user only. And for non-authenticated user, even though he's not in the room, we, we, we don't want to keep track of that. That's why we have only one right here, which is the current user right now. And this is powered by Superbase Real-Time Present, and you can check out in the documentation for this one as well. All right, so since this user is already vote, so he cannot cast a new vote. So as you can see right now, if I click on this one, he cannot be able to do that. And also he can be able to do the comment and he able to edit this one, which is his own comments only. Right now, I, I can delete my own comment. So maybe I can create a new one again, create hi, and this is a real-time comment. And another thing we have the profile page where the user can manage their uh, vote but this uh, right here we have only uh, this user did not have any votes so we need to create one all right so this is a created page okay so that's the quick demo of the application all right so right now let's talk about how i'm designed this table and policy for this application all right so for table and policy for this application is really simple so we have only five table and the first one is going to be the user table where it's linked into every table inside the application so if the user record is deleted so every information that related to this user will be removed it as well okay so we have this user and the policy of this user is select true. So it means non-authenticated user can be able to fetch this user information as well. So the reason that I designed it like that because it's specific case for this application because I want non-authenticated user to see the home page where who's created the vote and the end date of the vote and things like that. And as you can see, we have the hour time, the username and things like that. And for the non-authenticated user, if I to change the policy of the user to be selected authenticated. So uh, we will be able to not be able to achieve this uh, feature right here. So that's why I set up like that. And so right now let's take a look at the votes table. For, so for the vote table, we have the ID, title, description, and this is um and also notice that we do not have any vote option inside here so i split it into the new table for the vote option so the reason is that for the vote option i need to be protected so because we uh this one will be open to the policy of this one as you can see this is select true so i mean non-authenticated user be able to read this one so and for the option that so for the number of votes how many that we have and things like how many votes we have and things like that so we need to be protected so that's why i split this one because right now superbase do not have the column policy where you can define okay this column is to be protected and things like that so they have only row security so i mean like the block the entire row or allow to read the entire row and so the way that i do that i split the content that i think okay this is this content that can be protected need to be protected so i split that and if it's open to public so i just uh select do like this so right now that's why you'll be able to see this one as well so you can see we have the title and we have the title description and the end date for the created by and the created at right here will be auto generate for us but this three will be passed and the uh, description right here is optional okay so for the policy of the vote right here we have to select true everyone can read this one even non-authenticated user delete need you need to be authenticated and also this one you can delete only your own vote and then we have the update and then need to be authenticated and so you can update your own votes only. And notice that this vote table do not have the policy for 
create so you may ask how can we create this vote so i will show you in a moment and how i create this vote so, so now let's uh, explore the add a table first so right now we have the vote option so this vote option have only one policy as well which is going to be selected that is going to be require you to be locked in so that's why you can see select authenticate and for the vote lock right here we have only the authenticate as well and notice that you can be able to read your own vote lock so the vote lock right here we keep track of the the user who votes on which who votes on which option and uh, what what choice that you make so and something like that so we don't want the other user even authenticated user to be to read this okay this user is vote for this option this user for vote for that option no so that's why i be able to let them to read their own votes only this is the policy for this one and also we do not have any create or delete for this vote as well and for the common it's pretty standard and because you can you need to be able to authenticate to create and the send by need to be your own id so like to be you need to be authenticate delete delete your own update or with your own comments only so this is a pretty standard um policy for the common all right so right now enough with the table and the policy with all of this so let's talk about how i create the vote right here so since we do not have any policy for the created vote and also the policy for created vote option as well okay so the way that i create the, the vote is i using the vote created the vote and update the vote within rpc so which is going to be like the database function super base database function so um, you can check out more in here database function so it will look something like this so for the created vote i create an rpc function and you can see this is look very complicated but it's actually pretty simple and the way that i write this one is i using ChatGPT to generate me so i can choose types uh, and for example right here i can just uh, give prompt chat gpt it will generate most of the things for me but notice that the way that i insert the create a new vote is using this one so you can see this is where i insert into the vote and insert into the vote option so first let me uh, show you why I, I disable the policy for create and i create the rpc function to create a vote instead so in my previous video i talked about how the user can actually interact with your table and do the inserts directly right so if you, they know your table and things like that so the only the only way to avoid that you probably run everything on the server but it's not the case so i mean some requests will be exposed on the client the user can be able to access to that so that's why i don't want the user can just call to my vote options uh, to my vote and create the vote right here so for example uh, right now so when i create a vote i need to create a vote option as well so if i open this one for created uh, created uh, for authenticated user they can just only bypass my code they can just uh, uh, create a vote right here but then for what about vote option what if they call directly and do not have any vote option so this is going to be a problem right so that's why i disable this one and create an rpc function to do this instead and also there's a benefit when i do this uh, as well for the rpc so um, if you look at the rpc function right here as you can see there's two insert into this one within one function so it means the request that coming from your application to superbase it's only one request only there's no round trips so if you write your own code so first you probably write uh, insert into the vote make your request from client to the server and then come back and then make request another again to check whether the vote option and then to insert the vote so there's two round trip each right uh your application superbase and come back to your application and your application to superbase again but for in this case we just call one function so then it's going to be called from your application to superbase we have all your data inserted and then redirect back and send back to you everything's done that's great so we have only one request only and and the best case uh, um the best scenario of this one as well if one of the vote for example if the vote option here is fail okay and then the vote right here will not insert as well so this is great if we write our own code if one function is insert is success and the other function is fail 
I mean, like, how can you roll back to that? So you have to delete the previous record. So that's why this uh, using RPC to change input it's great, and also to avoid unnecessary like round trip call to your super base, and and also match with our my scenario where I prevent the user from just manipulating the call and things like that to my own on my table. So this is where I insert, and most of the things right here just checks the for example the vote option and things like that so for for example right here the j uh, the option right here need to be more than one key and the type of need to be number when they pass and all right so this is the rpc to create a vote okay so let's talk about when what happened when the user cast a vote so when the user go, go in here and then they click on update one of this one so for this one, I also create an RPC for doing this one as well. So the reason is that I just, I don't want to, the user can just call and update. So the same problem that I showed you before is that the user can call and update to your own database directly. And so that's why I prevent uh, the update uh, for the vote options. For for example, the vote, the vote option right here. Oh, I forgot to show you what the data look like for the vote option. So the vote option is going to be look something like this. So for example, we have the option one. So for example, opt one, the score is zero. And then we're going to have the opt two is going to be the score of zero and things like that. So this is like the default option. And the option right here can be, you know, uh, it can be anything. Okay. So... All right, so if we if I open this one, so for example, if I open update for authenticate user can be able to update the vote. So the problem is that they can just come in, in and update the entire JSON. So they can just remove uh, my JSON right here and then, or they can just uh, update whatever the value that they want or they can add a new option into it, which is not ideal in this application, right? So the way that I do that so I disable the vote update policy for the vote option. And the way that I do is that, uh, is I do something like this. So I updated the vote right here by, you can see this is update the vote. And then the function that will pass is gonna be the option that they wanted to vote. And so we, and then we all do the auto increment the vote. So each vote is gonna be five point, which is in this case right here, okay? And then we can just check if the vote uh, they will pass the vote id and the expirations if and I also check if the vote is still active or not so if it's not active we don't want uh, them to vote and then after that if we vote if update successfully also we're gonna insert into the vote lock okay so that's how i create the vote lock and create the vote and that's why i disable the policy and create a or PC function for the user to be able to call instead. So this one is to avoid some of the smart from smart user to bypass our code and manipulate our data as they're on their own. All right. So okay. So right now I think that's all that I wanted to share with you all for the created vote and the update vote. So let's talk about how I render the data inside the application. All right, so right now let me show you how I render the data inside this application. So for the home page right here, I render it on the server. So if you refresh this one, and as you can see, so because I want this content to be dynamic, and then for the new vote coming in, when the user go to this application, they will see this one. And then there's two function calls to fetch this one. First to fetch the active and the pass vote. So if we refresh, you can see. And of this one, I'm using subspend and stream the, the, this uh, result right here. So that's why we can see there's two loading between these two right here. All right. So this is for the home page and for the each individual vote room. And if we, you navigate, if you can see that it immediately navigate to this one because this page is uh, is I render it at build time as a statics and for the content, but for the content of this one, for example, the pool right here is going to be fetched at the client at runtime, and for this one right here, it will uh, do it at build time. So the beauty of this one is that. When I click, you can see it immediately navigate. If you build this one on the server, at least there's some cold stats and things like that when you navigate to each individual page. So for example, when you click here, if you render on the server, there might be some stuck for at least uh, half a second or one second, depend on the stat of the server. And that's why, as you can see, right now it's better. 
it, it's fast when I navigate into this one. And so when I do this on the static as well, so it's great for an SEO and I can generate the uh, description and thing like that. For example, if I share this, this application right here, uh, for example inside the discord right here so when i share this one so you can see uh, we have the uh, description of this one we have the image url uh, for the og image for this one as well so this is great for an seo that's uh, for this one as well okay and right now it's for the profile page i render this one on the server i think if i were to maybe change this one i can render this one from the client as well so i think since the the content is not needed for an seo right and so i think when the user navigate it would be nice for them to can see this immediately when they navigate so that's why if we change this one to uh, the server or the client it would be fine as well but right now it worked out great so maybe i don't have to change it and so the other thing is maybe for the create this page right here is simple uh it's just a client okay so i think that's pretty much it on how i render the data on this application okay so let me know in the comment if you have any question related to this one also i finish this one as well it's open source maybe like the source code is open and you can just go and grab and you can clone and run this one and so okay let me know what do you think about this application and don't forget to try it out let me know if you find any bug and this is just a fun small side project only okay so, all right, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.